In a brief exchange with reporters before leaving Florida on Sunday, President Joe Biden said he agreed to deploy the Thad battery to defend Israel. Biden spoke at MacDill Air Force Base in Tampa after making a quick visit to see the damage caused by Hurricane Milton and meet with first responders, residents, and local leaders. Earlier Sunday, Biden spoke alongside Department of Energy Secretary Jennifer Granholm, St. Pete Beach Mayor Adrian Petrila and others. No, I didn't. Well, well, by the way, I think we're making real progress. Everybody seems pretty happy with the way it's going. We're not leaving. We're promoting. We're going to do the next thing to do. We're going to make sure we get the money in there for small businesses. Talking to the Congress to see if they can get the money quickly. It's important. So, uh, it's all. I mean, Republicans and Democrats are happy with what we're doing. And so we're making progress. We're making progress. Sir Israel. Any, any worries about it? In fact, we've been able to restore power quicker because of critical infrastructure investments were made both when I was vice president and president to harden the grid. For folks at home, the grid means the electrical power system that transmits energy from the where it's produced on the power plant to where it's used in homes and businesses. We've been hardening the grid, like, like burying transmission lines underground, replacing wood power poles with concrete or composite poles so they don't snap in the wind. The Biden-Harris team secured unprecedented funding in the bipartisan infrastructure law to begin modernizing these systems. Before the president's announcement today, since the passage of that bipartisan infrastructure law, the Department of Energy, anyway, has allocated roughly $680 million to grid resilience projects just in the states that have been affected by Hurricanes Milton and Helene. So to the people of Florida, as the president has said, we will be here for you as long as it takes. Like so many of my neighbors, my family and I, we felt the full force first of Hurricane Helene and then of also Hurricane Milton. After the floodwaters of Helene hit, we thought we could begin to recover, patching up windows, cleaning up debris, and trying to get back to something resembling normalcy. And just as we be finally began to find our footing, here comes Milton. And with it, another wave of devastation. Russian President Vladimir Putin is facing a serious shortage of manpower in his army. Now both Russia and Ukraine are forced to find new resources to continue fighting and the prospects for ending the conflict remain illusory, writes Newsweek. Since February 2022, Russia has suffered more than 665,000 casualties, with more than a thousand Russian soldiers killed or wounded every day alone. Although Moscow does not provide detailed information on its losses, the Russian side regularly reports a significant number of Ukrainians killed and wounded, more than a thousand daily. Accurate battlefield casualty figures are difficult to verify. However, the British government says Russian casualties are approaching 648,000. William Freer, a research fellow at the UK Centre for Geostrategy, notes that both Russia and Ukraine are facing a shortage of human resources. He stresses that after ammunition, the most important factor in a war of attrition is replacement. According to the UK Ministry of Defence, Russia suffered its biggest monthly losses in September and the rising casualty rate is expected to continue until the end of the year despite the winter period. As the war continues, Russia is forced to find new ways to fill its ranks. The Kremlin hopes to make voluntary enlistment more attractive, but also has unpopular options such as sending conscripts to Ukraine or declaring a new wave of mobilization. Russia uses several sources to recruit its military. These include regular conscripts, contract soldiers, reservists, as well as mercenaries such as the Wagner Group fighters and foreigners who join the war in exchange for high salaries and citizenship. 
Mobilization remains a sensitive issue for Putin, despite announcing a call for 133,000 new recruits in the autumn draft. A significant number of draft-age men have left the country to avoid service. Last year, the Kremlin introduced new rules allowing summonses to be sent electronically, a move that helps combat draft evasion. Increasing financial incentives has become one of the main methods of attracting new soldiers. For example, Moscow allocated 90 billion rubles for payments to contract soldiers in order to recruit an additional 225,000 fighters. The Kremlin may find itself having to draw troops from wealthier regions, which could lead to political tensions. Freer notes that a fall 2022-style remobilization could seriously damage Putin's reputation. Military counterintelligence expert Mikhail Pritula told what a new mobilization in the Russian Federation might be like. According to him, the Russian Federation is losing 40,000 fighters per month. But if mobilization is announced in Russia, they will try not to touch Moscow and St. Petersburg.